Hi, this is Alonzo Bowden. I want to welcome you to episode 377 of my podcast, Who's Paying Attention? The podcast is brought to you by my sponsor, BetterHelp. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Alonzo and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Alonzo. Okay, so I want to pick up on something that I was talking about last week, the difference in pay between the CEOs and the workers, the difference in pay between the boss and the workers over the last, let's say, 40 years, maybe even, yeah, 40 years, coming up on 50 years. Since 1978, CEO pay has gone up 1,460%. Let me say that again. CEO pay for the largest 300, for the 350 largest publicly traded companies in the United States. CEO pay has gone up 1,460%. Worker pay, 18.1%. So when you hear people talk about wealth gaps and, and, you know, this is un-American and this and that and, and, and capitalism. No, this is greed. This is, this is unfettered greed. Okay, just in the last few years, in between 2019 and 2021, during the pandemic, CEO pay jumped 30%. And a big part of that was CEOs and corporate boards using government bailout money for stock buybacks, pushing up the price of their own company's stock by simply using money that was supposed to pay workers that they laid off, using that money, buy the company's stock, create demand for the stock, push up the stock price, you get a stock option, you get bonuses based on stock price, you get more money. So through the two worst years of the pandemic, they had a 30% pay increase. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I know. I'm a lefty, I'm un-American, and this and that. Meanwhile, all these people, and again, they take advantage of the weakest and the dumbest, and I shouldn't even say dumbest, no. The weakest and the most uneducated and the most emotional, and they tell them that the reason you have problems is because of black people or because of immigrants or because we have to follow some kind of regulation, this or that. No, the reason you make no money and they make a fortune is because they vote for their own pay raises. They vote in their own interest. They buy congressmen, they buy senators, they buy lawmakers on every level, from local to state to federal, and they they pocket this money. 1,460% pay increases versus the average worker's pay increase of 18%. And you're complaining about inflation? And you think your problems are caused by Joe Biden? Mm, somehow, I don't think so. Um, moving on, speaking of, of money and politics and capitalism and whatever else you want to call it, the Republican Party has reached a point, I mean, we already knew this, but, but they really, it's all about party over country, and they want this majority no matter what, they don't care. I don't know if you saw any part of the Herschel Walker debate. If you didn't see the debate, I'm sure you saw the memes and the jokes and the, and the cartoons and everything that went around afterwards. This fake badge thing. This During a debate, he pulls out a badge and claims he's part of law enforcement. Everyone clowns him for it. The, the moderator tells him, put away your props. The next day, he has some Cobb County hillbilly sheriff say, no, that's a real badge. It's an honorary badge. We gave it to Herschel Walker. Now, here's the thing. An honorary badge doesn't make you a cop. An honorary badge means that the police like you, and for whatever reason, they're giving you a badge. It doesn't make you a cop. It became a big joke. Now, Herschel Walker is selling those badges as a fundraiser for his campaign. It It sounds like all fun and games, but remember... This guy's going to become a U.S. senator. And the only reason the Republicans want him in the Senate, because he couldn't make a decision to save his life. He doesn't understand anything about policy or how the government works. He's been proven 
to be a liar numerous times, whether it be about the number of kids he's had, the abortions he's paid for, he's a hypocrite. All of that doesn't matter. They don't care. They want the majority in the Senate. That is all they care about. They will back this guy. And I hate to say it, but he'll probably win just based on name recognition. The Republicans are up to all of their old tricks. Racism, one of their old tricks. Not directly, not, not as bold as when Trump said all Mexicans are, are dope dealers or rapists. But they still toss it out there, okay, whether it be Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about the great replacement conspiracy theory, which means that the reason that they want to keep abortion legal and the reason they want to bring in all these immigrants and all that is to replace white people in America, okay? So there, there's that, okay? Then you have Donald Trump attacking McConnell's wife because she's of Asian descent. And, you know, so she must have been down with the, the, the China virus, you know? You have uh, Tommy Tuberville of Alabama, who talked about reparations. We're going to give money to the criminals, calling black people the criminals. It's all, it it used to be more subtle. Now, you know, the the dog whistle is a bullhorn, but it's getting close to the midterms. They they really, the the whole abortion uh, overturning Roe v. Wade thing has kind of backfired on them. There are a lot of women, a lot of young people upset when the Republicans are backed into a corner. What works? Good old-fashioned racism. Keep them scared of other. And that's what they're doing now. And it works. Now, it's interesting. They talk about uh, Michael Steele. Let me talk to you a little bit about Michael Steele. Michael Steele was formerly the chair of the National Republican Committee. Um, I have spoken to him. I've been on his podcast. He's been on my radio show he is intelligent. He is funny. He is something that's pretty much gone a reasonable Republican. I don't have to agree with Republicans, but he's one who put country before party. He's one who still thought they had some integrity, and he's not a Trumper. And it, this, he's black, by the way, if you don't remember or if you don't know. And his, you know, he hates the Republican racist tactic. I mean, even, uh, even, um, ah, the name will come to me, whatever. But anyway, she used to be on The View. You know who I'm talking about. Um, sorry, it's late. Listen, I just did an episode of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. I'm in Boston. It's 11 something at night. So sorry if, if names don't jump into my head. Uh, but anyway, is it, was it McCain? I think they're saying that the Republicans you know, led by Michael Steele, that the Republicans shouldn't resort, shouldn't lower themselves to these racist tactics. Uh, It's what they do. It's what they do. And it's what they use. And it works, unfortunately. How crazy is the Republican Party? How much do they not care? There's a state Senate candidate in Georgia. And Georgia has become... You know, wow. I mean, Florida's crazy, but Georgia, they got to be right up there next to them, right? They got to somehow be right with them. Josh McKay, running for state senate in Georgia. Pretty standard Republican stuff. Faith, family, freedom, guns, all that stuff. Here's what's a little different. He wants to loosen drunk driving laws. Can I say that again? He wants to loosen Drunk driving laws. Yeah, has anyone even talked about that in in who knows how long? Yeah, he says that the fact that there are laws and limits on the amount of drunk driving affects your freedom. And you know how that word freedom works with Republicans. That's right. Did he happen to get a DUI? Of course he did, back in 2002. But he says that, that, quote, You can nanny people all you want, but many people have to decide for themselves how much they can take when they drive. Like distracted driving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, stupid. Drunk driving is like distracted driving. And it seems that driving and talking on the cell phone has become almost as dangerous as driving drunk. And that's why many states have laws that you have to have a hands-free device. You can't hold the cell phone up and talk. 
which of course he also says affects your freedom. He's also against bike lanes and speed bumps. Now, you know, his opponent, uh, Nabila Islam, of course, being a Muslim is obviously a radical leftist out to take all your freedom. <laughs> He's out to take your freedom to drive drunk and kill somebody. It's America. What, what kind of country is this that you can't just drink and drive? It's up to you how much you drink and you drive. It, it's, this is, it's freedom. All of these words just work. It, it is comical. Well, no, it would be comical if it wasn't real. How, how quickly they fall into racism and, and then they start throwing around their key words. They love the word freedom as long as it doesn't involve freedom for anyone but them. But, so on that topic, Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson they really don't like her. Why? Because she's smarter than them. There's a uh, case at the Supreme Court, Merrill versus Milligan. It's another uh, attack on the Voting Rights Act. Okay, they, they in Alabama, I'm just double checking, I wanna get the right state. In Alabama, yeah, in Alabama, they redrew the voting maps, they redrew the districts, you know how that works. And they have only one black majority district out of seven districts, even though black people make up 27% of the population. It seems that if 27% of the population is black, there would be more than one district that is majority black. But no, they're saying that the district map, um, to challenge it, it's been challenged on race, you know, racial makeup. And they're saying, that, well, you have to prove intent. And, you know, they like this thing, the originalists of the Constitution is a right-wing thing. Let's go back to the 1700s when the Constitution was written. Let's go back to the 1800s when these amendments were put in. According to the rules back then, this is not discrimination, blah, 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 blah. Well, Ms. Jackson is a little smarter than them. So she went back and she used their originalist theory against them. And she said, when the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment were written, 13th Amendment to abolish slavery, 14th Amendment prohibiting states from denying equal protection of the law, and the 15th Amendment forbids abridgment of the right to vote on, quote, race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Now, that's very important because what the the state of Alabama is arguing is that it is discriminatory to use race in making this decision. And what she's saying is the originators, the one who wrote the amendment, said you absolutely have to use race. But when they said it, they said, and, and this is okay, and it's funny how the parties have flipped, right? So back, remember, back in the 1800s, the Republicans were the progressive fair, equal rights people, and Democrats were the Southern racists. So it's since flipped. But, but Republican Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania, when he introduced the amendment, he said, quote, unless the Constitution should restrain them, those states will all, I fear, keep up this discrimination and crush to death the hated freedmen. Okay, he was talking about the Southern states. Remember, this is right after the Civil War. And who do you think the hated freedmen were? They were black people. And he actually said, and this is amazing, it's almost like he was psychic. Unless the Constitution should restrain them, those states will all keep up this discrimination and crush to death the hated freedmen. He knew exactly what they were going to do. This was backed up again in the 60s with the Voting Rights Act. And the Voting Rights Act, and they added Section 2 of, to the 1965 Voting Rights Act. It says that prohibits any practice that results in denial or abridgment of the right of any citizen of the United States to vote on account of race or to have less opportunity than other members of the electorate to participate in the political process and elect 
representatives of their choice. And it says nothing there about intent, okay? Now, they, they hated that. They fought it. They fought it, right? In 1980, they took that to the Supreme Court and they lost. Congress actually amended it. This is how, this is how well Congress knows the racism of these southern states. They actually amended Section 2 of the amendment to specify that a voting procedure that has the effect of abridging the right to vote due to race, color, language, or minority status is illegal, regardless of whether the plaintiff could prove discriminatory intent. So what they're saying is you don't have to prove that it was intent. the intent was to be racist. If the result is racist, it's wrong. And that's what she's arguing. Unfortunately, they're in the minority, no pun intended, of the Supreme Court. And Alabama will get away with this redistricting just like other places do. But it's, it's amazing to me how well they knew these Southern races. They knew them so well, whether you look in the 1800s, in the 1960s, or in the 1980s, <laughs> they knew their racism so well. They were like, if we allow you to redraw these districting maps, if we allow you to make voting rules, if we allow you to make rules as regarding access to voting, any rule we allow you to do, you're going to do the racist thing unless the Constitution specifically says the federal government can stop you. And they're taking away these regulations and these states are doing the most racist shit as quickly as it can. It, it's like they were psychic. It was like, we know the minute we give you, quote, freedom to make your own rules, you're going to make the most racist rules possible. And I'm only laughing because they were exactly right. They, this is exactly what these southern states are doing. Look at Georgia. Look at Texas taking away the, the early voting, taking away the, the, the ballot drop-off boxes, taking away any opportunity that maybe the poorer people, the harder working people, people who don't have the time or people who need to vote in other ways and wait in line and traditional Voting and and by the way, fewer polling places in the minority neighborhoods in the immigrant neighborhoods to make it more difficult. Everything they can do to make it more difficult for a minority or an immigrant to vote, they're doing. And everything in the Constitution and the law said, we don't want to let you make your own rules because we know what you're going to do. And they did it. And that's where we are now. It is. Uh, <laughs> It's not surprising. It's not surprising. It, it's <sighs> another word from our sponsor. Okay. Um, you know, my sponsor for this show is betterhelp.com. And we're talking about problem solving. Okay. And you may have heard that they, the saying, don't live in the problem, live in the solution. And sometimes it's tough to teach yourself, to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode. Now, once you learn how to find your own solutions, it feels good. I'm going to tell you this. I had a situation where it was a, a relationship that went bad, and I had to deal with some of the aftermath. And I will just say that I used techniques that I learned in therapy to not get mad, to respond, to stand up for myself, and not fight, but talk. And it felt good not only to do it, but for my therapist to actually say, you did that right. You handled that well. You're improving. See, see, there's room for improvement. Okay, I felt better about myself. You know, not all the time, but <laughs> that time I really did. Listen, therapy works, plain and simple. Mental health is real. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, better help is a great option. It's convenient, it's accessible, it's affordable, it's online. You get matched with a therapist after doing a survey. You can switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, when you want to reduce your stress, when you want to know that you're handling situations better, therapy can help. So visit BetterHelp.com slash Alonzo today. Get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Alonzo. Now, there's something else I wanted to talk about, and I, I uh, have to thank a friend of the podcast, thank Mark for sending me this article and calling attention to this insanity that we deal with. Um, 
In Texas, the schools are giving out DNA kits. Why are they giving out DNA kits? Are they tracking the children again? This or that, the other. No, no. They're not tracking the children. They're not doing this. Do you know why they're giving out the DNA kits? And this is, this is the absolute insanity that we have reached as a society. They're giving out DNA kits so you can identify your child. Let me say that again. They're giving out DNA kits so you can identify your child. After Uvalde, and Uvalde was a, a horrific school shooting. Well, one of the things they don't talk about, and people wanted, they actually wanted to show the pictures so you could see the damage that a high-powered military-style rifle does to a human body. These kids were literally blown to bits. Arms, legs, heads blown off of bodies, torsos ripped to pieces. These are some powerful weapons, and these are what the bullets do. And what they're saying is collect the DNA, keep the DNA, so if your child comes up missing, you can find a child. And what they mean by missing is if your child is murdered horrifically in a school shooting and it's hard to put the body back together, they can use this DNA that you've collected and you have to identify your child. The horror of asking a parent to do that is beyond comprehension. The insanity of us as a society accepting that, entertaining the notion that that's okay, entertaining the notion that that's a good idea. This is Texas. This is a state that says, we don't want to do background checks before you get a gun. This is a state that's against any form of government intervention, whether it be mental health checks or ID or whatever. They're freedom, freedom, freedom. Anyone just go to the store, get a gun. The, the kid who shot up Uvalde, and he was a kid, he was 18, turned 18, bought the weapons, bought 400 rounds of ammo, went to the school and started shooting. And they won't do anything. They don't want to do anything to interfere with that murderer's freedom. But you, a parent of a child who goes to school, should keep your kid's DNA on file so when this kid whose rights we don't want to interfere with blows apart children at school, it'll be easier for us to identify them. That's where we are. That, that is considered reasonable in our society. If you thought uh, that the school shooting drills were insane, if you thought the school in North Carolina that's keeping an AR-15 under glass in case of emergency break glass so the teachers have to shoot it out themselves because God forbid they have cops like Uvalde who are afraid to go in on an active shooter situation so they stand outside while children get killed. If that outraged you, if, if Alex Jones who denied the the murder of the children at Sandy Hook, who's now getting financial penalties as a, as a way to attempt to shut him down. If any of that outraged you and you're like, what could be worse? I think this is worse. I think collecting DNA to identify children's bodies after a mass shooting at a school is another level of insanity that we never thought we would reach. And yet here we are. It's beyond anything you could have imagined. When I went to school, I went to school back in the 70s. There, wouldn't, there were no drills like this. There was no fear of this. We've allowed this to be normal. I have a couple of friends, I've said this before, who have left the country. They actually left the country because they didn't want their kids to go to school in a place where you distribute DNA test kits to middle school kids, fingerprint rent records, so that they can figure out the body. I don't know, people. I don't know. Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. I think as a society, if, if we can't turn this around, if we can't figure out 
how to somehow work together to make this unacceptable. If we can't figure out that there is some place between no guns at all and let's buy military weapons and take them to school and blow our kids to bits and then try to identify them by DNA. If there's no middle ground between those two, I don't know how our society can continue to function. I'll be honest. They're, 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 these politicians who are owned by the NRA need to grow some balls and stand up. Voters need to get out there and vote. You have to stop falling for these trigger words like freedom liberty nobody's coming to your house to take your guns what would you prefer somebody go to a dangerous person's house a person who's had a history of mental illness a person who's been arrested for domestic violence or something else a person to go to go to their house and take their gun or would you rather go to a parent's house and ask if they have the dna kit that you gave them because there are parts of children's bodies at the school and we can't identify them. Well, ding, ding, ding. Apparently the choice is B. I don't mean to be such a bummer on the podcast, but this is just, it's beyond anything you could imagine. And yet it is our reality. So <clears throat> there's that. <laughs> Honestly, people, I wish I could, could, you know, lighten this up. I wish I had something funny. And there's plenty of funny. There's plenty of stupid around. There's this or that, the other. There's Kanye. Hood boy. <laughs> and you can laugh at Kanye and his nonsense, okay? And, and all of this stuff. It's listenable. What was Fox News upset about this week? I'll close with this. What was... What was Jesse Waters of Fox News upset about this week? Well, he says, Joe Biden was eating ice cream just a little too casual. That's right. That's right. Joe Biden was just in Portland, Oregon, licking an ice cream cone. And apparently, this man says it's unpresidential, a lack of seriousness. A man should never lick an ice cream cone in public. A man can only eat ice cream on vacation. <laughs> this is what this guy was saying. This is what affects them. This is what angers them. If a man needs to, but if, if a man needs to eat ice cream in public, he should scoop it out of a bowl with a spoon like a man. <laughs> now, of course, Joe Biden tried to talk about inflation and say that it is a worldwide problem. The economic problem the United States is having is based on the, none of that matters. You know why? Because Waters said the president of the United States is licking things, especially ice cream, is childish, frivolous, and too casual a look for the country. I wonder what he said with, with Trump's fat ass playing golf. That's a beautiful shot we're all stuck with in his head. It's fucking wide ass on a golf course. That was okay. Because he wasn't eating ice cream. He has chomped down on a few burgers. Who's paying attention? You are. I appreciate it. This weekend I'm doing, uh, as I said, I've done the Wait, Wait radio show. Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me for NPR. We recorded in Boston. You can listen to that on the radio Saturday and Sunday. And I'll be live doing the Wait, Wait comedy tour tomorrow night, Friday in Ann Arbor, Michigan at the Michigan Theater and Saturday in Kalamazoo, Michigan at the Kalamazoo Theater. So please, if you can check us out, check us out. We have a great time doing what we like to call uncensored radio. Keep laughing. I appreciate you. This is Alonzo Bowden. Who's paying attention? You are. Mm -hmm.